Hey, hello guys and welcome to this new video. Hopefully you didn't have a lot of trouble with the um, enunciate uh, with the enunciate uh, assignment. Uh, I strongly recommend that you first uh, try to solve that assignment uh, before watching this video, right? You still want to add it up to you. But I think that you may have a better understanding of this one if you try to complete the other one first. Nevertheless, well, let's continue then with the second unit of this course analysis that we are going to study. And um, that will be the text. Uh, so if you can be so kind and go to the slide number 16, uh, that is what we're going to check. Now, with the text we have the same, the same um, problem or preconception that we have with the um, with the discourse and is that we have normally the idea that it must be written yes so discourse we usually associate it with orality and um, and text we normally think about just something written in a paragraph in a book in a uh, you know any sort of body of of words and that is the conception that we have. And um, it is not exactly that. Okay, those are also texts and probably are the most uh, recognized uh, format, if we can call it, of text. Uh, but uh, we have a lot of different ones. Yep. So let's let's try and check uh, this uh, this definition that we have over here, right? So it says that enunciates combine to create text. That is why I mentioned that it might be a good idea to to have a, a clear idea or a better idea of what enunciates are and trying to do that um, before watching the video. So the enunciates that remember were sort of isolated that couldn't be understood without a context. Remember that, yes, but later. Yes, that without the context of do you want to go to cinema or dinner with me, I don't remember. Uh, without that, uh, there is no possibility of communication, they are not self-sufficient, you require the context for that. Well, uh, a text is composed by combined verbal elements that form an intentional and complete communicative unit. Yes? Let's analyze that. Combined verbal elements, there are a lot of different elements of this course that we can implement or include into a, into a text. Uh, and they have an intention, yes? Uh, all of you have already taken a uh, composition, uh, some of you with me. So remember that uh, at least back then we studied uh, like four different different types of, of paragraphs. Descriptive, narratives, argumentative, I think expository maybe, but I'm pretty sure that at least the first three are in there. So by now you are supposed to know how to write and a descriptive or narrative or argumentative paragraph and uh, that the final the final uh, assignment uh, back then was to create an essay uh, and I repeated all the time back then that we were going to amplify this into formas discursivas yeah, hopefully some of you remember that and, and, and try to continue the process with me well we're going to do that we're going to see that there is a lot of discursive purposes or intentions uh, and that is why we're going to analyze different discourses over here yes one more time we are going to talk about the uh, descriptive discourse the narrative discourse the argumentative discourse the journalistic discourse the expository discourse okay those are basically the five uh, elements or the five discourses that we are going to uh, discuss in, into this course the totality of those we are going to go deeper, deeper than a paragraph, deeper than, than just the essay in, in our contents over here. Uh, but well, I say you this, I tell you this to uh, for you to know that, well, those are some of the different uh, intentions that this course can have. And they are a complete communicative unit, so different from the energy that really requires like something else, something else to, uh, to be understood. It requires a context, it requires additional information, cannot be understood per se. Well, a text, if it is well written, if it's well written, it should be self-sufficient, yes? 
That is why when you write something, if you require to explain something about your text, if you require to clarify something about your text, well, the text is not complete. It's not well written. Yes? Because it shouldn't require its author telling you, oh, what I meant over here was this, or what I meant over here was this. Unless, of course, we're talking about some varieties of literary text in which uh, there is not uh, a clarity and, and, and it is actually intentional that, 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 the, that the author does it in that way. Because he wants to sort of hide certain elements, so he wants the, the reader to analyze it in a deeper way. Well, there are, there are different like possibilities, but in general, let's say in, in the context that we are uh, managing more, most frequently, if you're sending a letter to a principal or to the head of the program or to the co faculty council, well, it must be clear enough. They shouldn't require to guess what you meant. Uh, you, you shouldn't be there by the moment in which the council is reading the letter to clarify your intentions. No, it should be clear, right? So uh, that's it. Basically, those are the texts, uh, combinations of enunciates and, and, and they sort of create uh, these texts uh, that are unitary, self-sufficient, and they have an intention. This short, this text, I'm sorry, can be shorter, they, they can be long, right? Um, so how can I uh, identify uh, a text, right? Well, Del, Del Himes in the 72 uh, provided us with a, a, a very useful tool in order to determine if something is a text or not. Yes, and that is the speaking, yes, and that is an acronym. So if you can go to the slide number 70, 17, sorry, you will see the speaking, S-P-E-A-K-I-N-G, right? So it's something easy to remember, an acronym. And uh, a text is supposed to have all of these parts. So let's explain one by one. Um, situation, yes, that is the first, the one that represents the S. S speaking, S B E, uh, the first S is for situation. Okay, so the text must have some sort of situation that it is either happening. For example, narrative texts always, always uh, have a like a story, yes, that they are telling, and that would be the situation. So I would say that recognizing the situation is really easy on uh, narrative uh, text. What about some other texts? For example, think about a descriptive text, yes? What will be the situation of a descriptive text? Well, the fact of describing the person, the animal, the place, or whatever uh, that is uh, happening in the, in the description. What is the situation in an argumentative text? Well, you see again, uh, that um, argument, concept, idea, uh, from which you are trying to convince the other person, right? That will be the situation, yeah? Now, participants, one more time. I would say that uh, in general terms, narrative texts are, are probably the easiest one to, uh, to find out, to discover, to verify if they uh, fit into the speaking format, yes? And what are the participants in a narrative text? simple, the, the characters, right? So who are the participants in, in Little Red Riding Hood? Well, pretty simple, the the, the wolf, uh, the girl, the uh, mm, the huntsman, the, the woodcutter, the uh, um, uh, the granny, did I mention the granny? Well, um, all these different ones, all the characters that appear in the, um, in the story. Now, uh, who are the participants in an argumentative? Well, the person, then they may be different ones. Now we will have to analyze text, but in general, it could be the person who is trying to convince the other, or the audience, or if we're talking about, uh, I don't know, a um, scientific test, well, the, the institution that is promoting that, whatever, and, and in a descriptive one, well, simple enough, it should be the object, person, geography, whatever that is uh, being described, described, I'm sorry, and, um, and the person who does that, or 
any of the other ones, right? Hopefully you get the idea. No, I'm not going to repeat the three cases in the rest of the of the components. Hopefully you get the idea. Now the next one is very important because it's one that people tend to confuse a lot. Yes, the ends. So the end doesn't refer to the ending of an narration. Yes. So what is what are the ends of uh, of um, Snow White, for example? So some people would confuse and would say incor incorrectly that the ends of Snow White is that uh, uh, she is dead, but then she sort of uh, uh, resuscitates and the the witches die and the witch die and and. And she marries the prince. No, that is the ending of the story, the final part. I am not asking about that. Oh, I'm not. That is not what the the word uh, ends means in this context. Ends in Spanish for clarification will be fines propositos, right? Um, has to do with the goals or or finalities, finalities, right? And and what is that? Well, simple enough. Uh, what is the purpose of the text? And uh, well, simple enough. What is the purpose of a descriptive text? Very good. Describing. What is the context of a narrative text? What is the end? I'm sorry. What are the ends of a narrative text? Well, narrating something, telling a story. What is the end? What are the ends of an argumentative text? Um, argumenting something, convincing you. Uh, of something or convincing you that something is true or that is false okay so please don't get don't get confused with that now uh, what is the act sequence that is the next one remember we're talking about S P E next one is the A act sequence well uh, the act sequence is uh, let's say the distribution of events in uh, in the text yeah so, uh, for example, one more time for narrative is very easy. Uh, let's say the act sequence of Little Red Riding Hood is that uh, she wants to take some uh, food to her grandma. Uh, she finds the wolf in the middle of the road. Uh, he tricks her. Then uh, the wolf uh, eats the, the granny, pretends to be her. And in the end, a little red riding hood is uh, sort of uh, rescued by the by the huntsman, right? So a narrative text is basically the parts of the narration, pretty simple. In the other two, well, in 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 uh, in uh, a descriptive one, it depends on how it is written. For example, you could say that the act sequence is that uh, you start describing the person uh, physically. And then emotionally, and in the end, you give your opinion about if you like him or not. Yes? If you're describing a place, maybe the act sequence. Remember, I'm just making this up. It depends on the, of the text itself. So you can uh, describe the architecture of a place, and then describe the history of the place, and then you can describe maybe the weather, and then you can end with, a, with an opinion, right? Uh, that would be the, the the act sequence. And in argumentative, one more time, what do you want to argument about? What is the idea that you want to provide? What are the proof? Uh, what are the, the, the proofs or the, the arguments that you provide in order to convince a person? And a conclusion that will be, hopefully, that what you, may, what, what you say is true, right? So, um, I expect that, that that is clear enough. Then the next one, another tricky one, just like the ends part, is the key yes the key is the tone el tono yes um what is that guys yes uh, i know that uh, if you're not really familiar with uh, especially literary uh, discourse um, this can be a little bit tricky right so the tone has to do with uh, the mood or uh, the feelings or emotions that uh, this is going to, or the text I mean, is going to transmit. So, what is the key of an academic test? 
an essay, something that is published in a magazine for education or something like that. How is the key? Well, pretty simple. It is formal, technical, educated. The vocabulary is uh, pretty specialized, etc. Right? So for saying one word, it will be formal. Right? Now, what is the key, meaning the tone of, uh, let's say, a caricature, right? A cartoon. Imagine that there are some panels and strips there. What will be? Well, it may be probably humoristic, yeah? Relaxed, informal. The vocabulary you use maybe is day to day, it's not really specialized, etc., right? What is the tone, for example, or the key of a poem? Uh, depending on the sort of poem, it may be romantic, loving, uh, sad, uh, depressing, yeah? I don't know. So uh, that would be it. Uh, what would be the tone, the key of a, um, I don't know reggaeton song that it's also a text yes it's, uh, has some enunciates and ideas and they are interconnected and they try to transmit something a message no in the end it's usually like perrea mami perrea or something like that well what is the tone what is the key informal sometimes they use a rude vocabulary uh, sometimes it is just informal sometimes it may be uh, erotic if we want to call it that way Yes, so hopefully with all these examples that I gave you, you are, you are able to determine the key. What is the concept of the key? Normally, that is represented by one word, like the ones that I have mentioned uh, before. No, like formal, informal, humoristic, sad, frustrating, educating, technical, etc. Right? So, hopefully that's clear. Uh, then we have the instrumentalities, okay? So this sort of have uh, has this sort of has uh, like two things to analyze. Yes. So the first is like uh, how is it presented? Yes, and it is like the format. So what is the instrumentality of, of this this text yes the one that I just read some moments ago well a book a printed a printed printed book yes so this text is, is basically has the format of a novel and, and well let's say more than a novel is the, the format of a book it is physical there are pages and everything that we get to know as a book right so that will be the instrumentality of this text but then if you take a look at um, of the presentation that hopefully you are, you are watching right now, what is the instrumentality? Well, a PowerPoint presentation. It is a text composed by a, by a lot of different slides uh, that you are watching right now, and, and that is the instrumentality. Yes, like uh, the modality used to, to, to provide that. Now, uh, can a video like the one that you're watching right now, be a text? Can it? Yes, sure, it can be a text. Uh, it is a set or a group of enunciates. Uh, it is self-sufficient, like sort of, you can watch the video itself on its own and, and it will make, hopefully, uh, uh, it will make sense. Sure, you may have required to watch the previous videos by in itself. Uh, I mean, this video about the texts hopefully uh, can be watched on its own, right? And what will be the instrumentality for this text that is a video? Well, the video itself, the uh, YouTube app, uh, everything else, okay? So that will be the uh, instrumentality in terms of, uh, of the different texts that, that we have. Um, and well, I mentioned that there will be like like two ideas about this. So the first one is like the the media, if we want to call it that way, paper, books, leaflets, brochures, videos, 
uh, well, whatever whatever way that we have uh, in there. And then uh, the second aspect will aspect sorry will be uh, how do they uh, transmit the message? Yes, that will be like the second one, uh, not in terms of of uh, the material itself, such as paper or the video or whatever, but also in terms of uh, of the device that they use. Yes, so if it's maybe something close to what we are going to see in the final part a genre okay uh, but let's say that the most important part is uh, i mean to determine in which format uh, somehow the, the message is, is transmitted yeah now the other part of the instrumentalities may be for example what do they use in order to transmit message so for example i have used uh, during this uh, presentation a couple of similes, uh, metaphors, figures of speech, right? So those are devices that help me uh, clarifying uh, the message, hopefully, right? So those are the instrumentalities. How do I transmit uh, the message in terms of the materials that I use, videos, paper, etc.? And how do I transmit in terms of uh, metaphors or similes, figures of speech, comparisons, well, all that, okay? Hopefully it's clear. Then we have the norms of, norms of interpretation that are uh, pretty much like the linguistic component of the first video. Remember that one? If you if you don't remember, go and watch it again. Uh, and it's what do I need to understand this text? Yes. So most of the times, what we require for this is just the language, right? Um, then again, for example, let's imagine that you're reading. Harry Potter 2 or 3 or 4, a lot of the rings, 3, well, you would require to understand that to have read the previous ones, yeah? Oh, for example, if you're reading a book on the World War II, so probably you would require to know a little bit of politics or history in order to understand it, yes? If you're reading a, a book on pedagogy, uh, so most likely you would require to uh, to know about certain basic concepts, basic concepts of uh, pedagogy, didactics, education in general, right? So, one more time, we go from the very basic, that is the linguistic part, to uh, something related to cognition, right? And finally, we have the genre, right? it's quite simple, yeah, so one more time, I have this Lolita that is a novel, what is the genre? A novel, if I want to be more specific, I could say that this is a sort of romantic, let's say, uh, novel with some parts of psychological development and then uh, if I'm going to talk about this text so I would just say that it is uh, yeah, poetry, right? We have a lot of different ones, different genres such as conference, sermon, interview, debate if we're talking about orality or if we continue talking about writing so it will be essays, it will be uh, uh, summaries, it would be a uh, tale, it would be fairy tale, well, a genre, right? Anyway. So, hopefully, with this long explanation about the speaking, I was able to provide uh, enough elements for you to be able to classify something as a text, okay? So, if you say that something is a text, it must have the full speaking. Yes, all of it. It must have situation, participants, and act sequence, key, instrumentality, norms of interpretation, and genre. Yeah? If it doesn't have, let's say, one of those or two of those, well, it may be acceptable somehow because it's maybe an experimental text or because it is a text that is focused pretty much in some elements and not in others. But then if we're missing half of them, uh, it is basically a text that was uh, badly written or badly transmitted orally and then if we have two or three elements that is not a text at all yes it's just simply a lot of enunciates that were unable to to connect themselves properly okay now very shortly i am going to explain 
the assignment. Do not worry, this assignment is for the week number two. Okay, so for the week number one, you only have the previous two that are short enough, hopefully. Um, so this one that I'm going to explain right now will be for the next week. So what you're going to do is to go to a slides number 18 to uh, 25, 18 to 25, okay? And um, you are going to determine, well, first of all, you're going to read, of course, and you're going then you're going to determine if they are texts or not. How do you do that? Well, you're required to do the speaking for each one of those, okay? So you're going to tell me what is the situation, what is the participants, etc. Right? So remember the explanation that I just gave. If they have all of them, if it has all the speaking, so it is definitely a text. It, if there are two or three that are missing, well, that is still a text. It is just um, not very complete. And uh, if, if there's a lot of missing elements, uh, then it's not a text, okay? So simply you're going to take one by one, create the speaking. Let's imagine you say uh, in the first one, uh, in the number 18, yeah? S, situation. Uh, there is a person telling the biography of Samuel Morse. Period. You continue with the next one. Part P, for participants. Uh, the, um, uh, the person who writes the biography and the reader. And you go on. You go on with the rest ones, the the rest of the ones, okay? So uh, basically, that's it. The idea is that you, in the end, have one speaking for each one of the possible texts, and you tell me, yes, this is a text, no, this isn't a text, okay? Something short. I'm just asking you uh, a short sentence by each letter. Sometimes, for example, like in the in the key or in the genre, you don't need a full sentence. You only need a a, a word, humoristic, serious. Formal, informal, poem, ad, a comic book, yeah, that would be easy. Now, just as I will explain in the in the assignment itself, you can uh, do this in groups, okay? So you can work uh, in groups of maximum five people if you prefer, so it's easier for you, like the distribution of the thing. Uh, but I am going to ask you that, I'm going to ask, sorry, that each person uploads uh, like the 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 homework the assignment okay so even though if you decide that you're going to work in groups of four or five people so you create one document and you upload it personally each one of you uh, into the into the into the system into the assignment okay uh, because I require to uh, give you a grade individually even if you are working group yes so let's imagine that everybody goes a 4.5 so i need to put each one of you a 4.5 yes this is a free a free app, a, a app. Uh, so that's why it has some limitations but we can just work around it so that's it guys uh, don't worry remember this this assignment that i have just explained is not for the week number one it will be for the week number two uh, and that's it so thank you very much for your attention and remember, if you have any question or something similar, just let me know, okay? Have a great rest of whatever you're having, day, afternoon, or night. And see you in the next video. Bye-bye and hugs.